Hi, I'd like to talk about natural flexibility, the way all animals, including humans, stretch. I made a discovery many years ago when I was trying to repair my body from my pedestrian automobile accident that traditional stretching didn't work and make me more flexible. I discovered instead that all animals actually contract muscles when they stretch them and that when you do that, it increases your flexibility. So you all know this already. You watch cats and dogs and other animals and they reach forward and then you see them go, that thing. And then you, and you get up in the morning and you go like this and then you go, what is that part? Oh, well, that's the best part of the stretch feeling. And I identified all that is, is that your muscles contract when they get stretched. So you can find out if you read the medical literature that any time you lengthen a muscle, say you're lengthening your bicep, it starts contracting. But a lot of people don't know that if you let it tense and contract, the fascia that surrounds the muscle tissue will also resist that elongation. And when you do that, you actually will get a change in the flexibility of the muscle. Well, Everybody then thinks, well, flexibility is the end game. Well, no. Flexibility, natural flexibility results not just an increase in the ability of the muscle to elongate, but surprisingly, the capacity of the muscle to shorten and the rate that it shortens and the rate of the rate or the acceleration. So that when, say, you, want to you do activities where you like to jump, well, the muscles on the back of your legs and back of your glutes going up your back are the muscles that contract that when you push against the ground, push you up into the air to jump. But if they're not flexible enough, they can't short enough so you can't jump. Most people think it would be the strength of those muscles or the size of them that would determine how much you could jump. Those are factors, but the bigger factor is can the muscle actually shorten? So I discovered many years ago that animals all naturally contract muscles when they stretch. And then I found out later that fascial material, it's kind of like a plastic wrap, like a saran wrap, a, a cellophane that surrounds and roots inside of the muscle tissue and also does the same thing around all, everything else, your tendons, your ligaments, your bones, your uh, epithelial structures, everything is kind of impregnated by this fascial material. It's kind of like the fascia material is like the soup stock, the, the soup, and then your bones and muscles and everything else are the thing inside of the soup. And so when you go and you, you go to stretch your biceps, say, and you start where the muscle's really short, and then you go to where the muscle's longer and longer while this muscle is contracting, you'll feel the muscle contract, but you're, you won't be very much aware that the fascia that surrounds it, as it's being elongated, has two to six times the tensile strength or resistance of the elongation compared to the muscle contracting. So if you, say, lifted a weight of, say, 20 pounds with your bicep, to stretch it, it would require two to six times that amount of force to stretch the bicep. So if you just lift the bicep and lower the bicep, even if you do it at a slow rate, you just become muscle bound. But if you act, you have to use much more force to stretch the muscle. And then when you do, those fascial structures change. Many years later, I also discovered from a really, a very good friend of mine, a great scientist at Harvard Sharif, that when the muscle contracts while it's being elongated when you stretch, that muscle releases enzymes that causes the changes or the transfiguration of the, all the fascial material and regeneration of other tissues. So that's why animals stay more flexible. The other concern is that most people not only don't know that they should let their muscle tense when they stretch, but the further out you go in the muscle stretching, the more tension it wants to generate and the more resistance you give that. 
from the fascial resistance. If you interfere with that, you actually interfere with that process of becoming more flexible. So the muscle will relax, but it does it because it reaches a level of tension and then a reflex fires and then the muscle relaxes. You don't do that. That's a natural thing that just happens when you stretch. So regardless of whatever muscle you're stretching, say your hamstrings and everybody knows the muscles on the back of their legs are really tight and they bend forward to stretch their hamstrings, they're thinking, oh, I should relax that because that feels really tight. But if you didn't do that and you let the muscle contract and if you feel it with your hands, you'll get even more feedback about what's happening to your hamstring. You'll find that as you bend forward, that the muscle contracts, you'll actually feel yourself getting a better stretch than if you interfered or thought to make it relax. And then when you come back up out of that stretch, the muscle now gets to contract and shorten and you develop strength of that muscle group. There are eight muscle groups in your lower body to move you in eight different directions. There are eight muscle groups in your upper body to move you in eight different directions. And each one of those muscle groups happens to be identical to the pathway of muscle groups that are associated in Chinese medicine with different organs. And they're also associated with 16 genetic personality trait development. So when you stretch a muscle and you now find that, wow, I get a much better stretch when I let my muscles contract, you don't just get the benefit of more flexible muscles. You get benefits in organ physiological health and also per specific personality trait development. There's one more thing to know about when you're stretching a muscle and that is say you're stretching your bicep. So when you're stretching your bicep and you start where the muscle's short and you go to where the muscle's long, the question is how far do you take it when you're stretching that muscle? And the answer is it's not about the bicep. It's about the balancing muscle, your tricep on the other side. So if I wanted to stretch my bicep, obviously my tricep has to shorten. And as I talked about earlier, the capacity of a muscle to shorten is really based on its flexibility. So as long as when you're stretching your bicep that your tricep can shorten because it's flexible enough, then you can keep stretching your bicep. Not whether the bicep can keep tensing and resisting, but by whether or not your tricep can keep shortening. So when you're stretching any muscle group, you have to feel the one on the other side and make sure it's shortening or tensing. Otherwise, then you're overstretching. The other great news about natural stretching is that these fascial materials that go through uh, groups and groups of muscles, like your hamstring fascial material, also goes through your calves and to the bottom of your feet and through your glutes and up your back and over the top of your head. So though muscles only go a certain distance, these fascial materials collect whole groups of muscles going up the whole body from the legs up into the head or from the arms up into the head and the trunk. Huge uh, contiguous groups of muscles are getting affected. When you stretch one muscle, it grabs the fascia all the way up the chain. That, that fascial material is a tensegrity structure. That tensegrity structure is like a geodesic dome. So when you put a weight on a geodesic dome, the members on the outside of the dome support the weight as it goes to the ground, as opposed to a pole in a building where the weight goes down into the ground through the bone, like the bones of your body. The fascial material suspends the weight to go down to the ground. So when you're standing and the weight of your body goes down your leg towards your knee, if the fascial material, particularly on the back of your leg, is healthy, when the weight goes down, it doesn't go into the knee. Most of it goes around the knee through the fascial material and then down your lower leg until it gets to the ankle. Then it gets suspended around your ankle. So this magical fascial material which is the most energy efficient material in the body. So when you contract your bicep, your fascia tricep stretches like a rubber band if it's healthy. And then when you stop contracting this, it just brings your back. So it doesn't take any energy for the tricep to contract 
to bring you back. Extremely energy efficient, unless there's been trauma to the fascial material. And that's why you need to stretch is to take that out. So this great fascia that makes it really easy to move, it also causes suspension in all your joint structures. So if you have, a, if you have torque or tension in your knee, it just means the fascial structures are not suspending the weight, they're compressing the weight around your knee. So when you stretch out, say, the central hamstring on the back of your leg, what ends up happening, it suspends the weight. So if you normally have creaky knees or knees that don't feel the way they used to feel when you were younger, then it's really probably the fascial material that's going on, assuming no joint damage. So you can actually regenerate all of the muscle tissues and stuff and make them healthy the way they were when you were younger. And you can also suspend all the joint structures so you have this incredible freedom of range of motion. That fascial material is such a magical part of movement that when a scientist analyzed a cheetah running with electrodes and taking uh, measurements of the muscles contracting, they found that the muscles contracting didn't produce the speed of the cheetah. The fascial material returning is what creates the speed. So when you stretch naturally, you get a benefit of increased flexibility. You get an increase in potential physiological health of the organ associated with that muscle group. You get specific personality type trait developments of that muscle group. And you get this youthification of your body because people are just prematurely aging. They're not supposed to be aging at the rate. It's not about getting younger. It's about reversing the premature aging. And natural stretching is what does that. So have a great time naturally stretching. Pick whatever muscle group you want to work on. Try it with your bicep. Try it with your quad. Try it with your hamstrings. See if you get a great result. And then start doing it everywhere where you want some help. And get other people to help too. Because you don't do anything by yourself. Everything requires everybody else. So get other people to help stretch you too and help stretch them. Okay, have a great time. So we have three centers, one in Santa Barbara, one in Los Angeles, and one in Boston with lots of trained trainers, wonderful people to meet, and a web page, The Genius of Flexibility, which has hundreds of videos for you to self-stretch and also assisted stretch. Have a great time.